In this video, we'll be taking a look at Deke's third attempt at a Sonic TV series, 1999's Sonic Underground, a show which, at first glance, looks like a continuation of the previous series, Sat AM, but is actually something else entirely. So please be sure to smack that like button, and if you're new here, consider subscribing for high-quality evergreen Sonic and Sega videos. If you've been following this channel for a while now, you may have seen me talk about Deke's previous attempts at Sonic TV series, with Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog, which I was never too keen on due to how batshit silly it was, and Sat AM, which I really enjoyed as a kid, despite it being a very different, much darker take when compared with the Sonic games at the time. So, how does Sonic Underground fare? I would usually tell you some fairly long story about how the show impacted me when I was younger, my thoughts on the series, and then compare it to how I felt about it now. But in the case of Sonic Underground, well, that's not really an option. This is my entire experience with it. One summer's morning, back in 1999, I remember my acne-covered, gormless teenage self stumbling half asleep into the living room and turning on the TV. The channel was ITV. To my surprise, there was a Sonic show on, and I had no idea what it was. Whatever I was watching, it had completely flown under my radar. Suddenly, I was wide awake. At first, when I saw Robotnik show up, matching his design last seen five years earlier in Sat AM, I thought I'd struck gold, and we finally had a Sat AM Season 3, or at least some sort of follow-up, which would presumably conclude the Season 2 cliffhanger from some years back. But as the show went on, it quickly became apparent that this wasn't the case. There were some things I liked, and they were as follows. The animation looked nice, a step up from Sat AM perhaps? It was certainly cleaner anyway, where the tech had moved on. Knuckles rocked up too, for the first time in a cartoon if you don't count the 1996 Japanese OVA, which hadn't been released in the West at this point in time. So it was cool to see him on TV for the first time. Also, Robotnik seemed menacing like he was in Sat AM, rather than the silly Robotnik from Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog. It also seemed to continue with the darker tone of the previous series. So, not bad. But after these first few moments of, well, this is pretty cool, the series very quickly shat the bed. First off, Sonic also had a brother and sister. What the fuck? And then, they started singing. I sank back into the sofa and just wanted it to swallow me whole, to take me away from whatever I was looking at. I was embarrassed for the show, and myself for sitting there and watching it. So yeah, Sonic had siblings, who also performed in a band with him, with instruments that turned into weapons. But at the same time, the show seemed to want to have quite a dark tone and a serious plot. It was so odd. And seeing my blue boy singing alongside his brother and sister, well, it was too much for me. That was all I needed to see of Sonic Underground. And it's not necessarily because I was a teenager and I was too old for it, or that I'd lost interest in Sonic in 1999 either. I was big into Sonic Adventure at the time, having picked up a Japanese Dreamcast and a copy of Sonic Adventure some months earlier, and I'd go on to purchase the OVA movie later that same year. But something about this show just sucked so bad that I just couldn't deal with it. I never watched Sonic Underground again, and instead choose to ignore its existence entirely. But that was then and this is now. These days, Sonic Underground is a single-season oddity in a multiversal sea of Sonic cartoons and movies. So bear with me a moment while I go and watch the show, more or less for the first time ever, and then we're going to talk about this. Bloody hell. That was an experience. So let's get into it. I'll just say that I'm generally pretty positive when it comes to Sonic. Even if it's a game, show, comic, or whatever that I don't really like, I can usually find something positive to say about it, and I'll try and do that here too. But fuck me watching that series was a chore. Anyway, I probably did about half of the 40 episodes of the show, which I think is enough to give me an idea of what it has on offer. I went through the first six or so in sequence, and then, after realizing how long this was actually going to take, I skipped ahead to the best ones, and I use that term loosely, based on a list I found online. And I made sure to watch the Knuckles episodes too, as well as the series finale. So here we go. The series begins with the funniest opening credits to a show I've ever seen. I was howling with laughter. It's just so silly. 
Let's look at a clip. Triplets born, the throne awaits. A seer warns of a deadly fate. Give up your children, separate. Surely, to anyone even remotely familiar with Sonic, this intro will be fucking baffling. Sonic Underground, they made a vow, their mother will be found. I think what makes it so ridiculous is a combination of how completely different it is from all other Sonic media, with talks of prophecies and seers, and a queen giving up her children, and a deadly fate as well as how seriously it takes itself, whilst being backed by such a, let's say, passionate performance from the singer of the theme song. It's so over the top. It could actually be argued that the intro song slaps, and I wouldn't necessarily disagree musically. As a kid's cartoon action opening theme tune, it probably ticks all the boxes. And the guy singing's really giving it his all, and good on him. But I made the mistake of reading a quote from comedian Chris Hardwick on the theme song before watching the show, where he said, That guy sounds like he's trying to win his ex-wife back. That's all I could think of, and it made me laugh more and more. That quote fucking nails it. Sonic Underground! Sonic Underground! Anyway, let's go into the convoluted plot of this daft series. As I think I mentioned already, visually it looks similar to the previous series, Sat AM, but a bit more colourful, and it includes some of the same locations such as Robotropolis and the same robotic design. But that is more or less where the connections end. This is its own universe, with its own standalone plot, that goes like this. Queen Alina, the former ruler of Mobius, was overthrown by Dr. Robotnik, which forced her into hiding. To preserve the dynasty, Queen Alina separated her three children, Sonic, Manic, and Sonya, after the Oracle of Delphius told her of a prophecy proclaiming that one day the Queen would reunite with her children to form the Council of Four and overthrow Robotnik. Meanwhile, Dr. Robotnik did his best to set up an autocratic government and legally turned anyone who stood against him into robots devoid of free will and forced the nobles into paying large amounts of money to him as tribute. Did you get all that, kids? I adapted that from Wikipedia because my breakdown of the plot was far too long and rambling. But I mean, outside of that, the basic gist is that, uh, like Sat AM, it once again involves freedom fighters who want to overthrow Robotnik, restore peace to the planet, and a bunch of other characters, many of whom sort of help Sonic and his siblings on their quest. So yeah, let's talk about the characters for a moment. As mentioned, Sonic has siblings in this show, who were all separated as babies but reconnect in the first episode. Sonic himself grew up fairly poor, but with nice parents. His sister Sonya was taken in by some poshos who lived in a big mansion, and his brother Manic was stolen by some wrongans before he could be adopted as planned, and was raised in the sewers of Robotropolis to become a thief. So, that gives each of them their own personalities, which is nice. And by the way, Jaleel White, who voiced Sonic in Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog and Sat AM, once again returns here, and this time voices all three of the triplets, in what is sure to be the Kyle MacLachlan moment of his career. Other main characters include Robotnik, similar in tone and identical in design, to the one from Sat AM, although this time he's voiced by Gary Chalk. The triplet's mother, Queen Alina, is also fairly reoccurring, tends to show up as holograms or voiceovers when Sonic and his siblings find notes from her and things like that. But I'd say the two main additions to the cast are Robotnik's new bounty hunter henchman, Sleet, a wolf, and I guess the brains of the two, who sounds distractingly to me like Ren Hoek, and Dingo, who looks like a Crash Bandicoot knockoff on steroids. He's also a bit of a thicko and has a constant hard-on for Sonya. Also, I think it's worth mentioning, and it's just a small thing, but Sleek can turn Dingo into things with a remote control. Like seemingly literally anything. Bikes, boats, a carpet, a computer, a woman. Like I said, I just thought it was worth mentioning. I'm not sure how or why he can do this. Maybe I missed that episode. Maybe it was never explained. Or maybe I zoned out and didn't pay attention to that part. Let me know in the comments if it's ever explained, because I'd love to know. Some other side characters we get include the Oracle of Delphius, whatever the hell that thing's supposed to be, our old pal Knuckles the Echidna, oh yeah, and Sat AM's Uncle Chuck makes an appearance too, but ends up getting roboticized, as is tradition. 
I guess, reluctantly, I should talk about the music in the show. Not the orchestral stuff, that's fine. But rather, the other music in the show. So, the Sonic triplets all have necklaces with different instruments on them. They were nothing more than useless jewellery while separated, but when they come together, and the three are in harmony with each other, they can summon instruments which also act as weapons. For God only knows what reason, they perform in a band together. Which means in every single episode, you have to sit through a shit song. I truly despise these. If there's a good song in the bunch that I missed, let me know in the comments. But everyone I heard was just awful. Sonic, who provides the vocals, sounds like a singer in a late 90s, unsigned, less than Jake mimicking ska punk band. We have to learn. And the lyrics, which focus on some loose theme or takeaway lesson from the episode, will make you cringe harder than you ever have in your life. Let's do it to it. Let's show them who's the boss of the place. Let's do it to it. Just awful. But let's look at some positives for a moment. Jaleel White is good as usual, providing you like his version of the character, and I like some of the new characters here. For how stupid they are in concept, I actually quite like Skeet and Dingo as bounty hunter henchmen. Then there's the story itself. For as completely ridiculous, convoluted and disconnected to previous Sonic lore it is, at least the writers have tried to come up with an ambitious and consistent backstory for the series, which takes itself pretty seriously and generally follows on from episode to episode. It makes for some pretty good world building, but I didn't like that world personally. And to be honest, I've never been into all the royal guff that they threw into Sat.I.M and the Archie comics. But the writers certainly went big with it. Unfortunately though, or possibly fortunately depending on how you look at it, the show never concludes and abruptly ends without a second season to wrap things up. Oh, and I haven't mentioned Knuckles yet. He is okay. He lives on the floating island and guards a Chaos Emerald, so that's kinda like the game. He has a pet dinosaur though for some reason. Overall though, I really didn't enjoy this show at all. Watching these episodes was an absolute chore. Usually I can watch any other Sonic series and get varying degrees of enjoyment from it. But this well and truly bored the arse off me. I found it so dull, it's left me with very little to actually say about it. The plot was ridiculous, the music was embarrassing, and for its target audience, the whole thing was probably way too complicated. Going from Sat AM to this is a huge downgrade in terms of quality. So, a thumbs down from me, and not a show I think I will ever revisit ever again. But what did you think of Sonic Underground? Do you agree with me? Do you think I'm being overly harsh? Maybe you grew up with it, loved the show and enjoyed the songs? I'm happy for you if you did. Let me know in the comments. Also, please share this video out there, smack that like button, and if you're new here, consider subscribing for evergreen Sonic and Sega videos. Thanks a lot, and I'll see you next time.